talking about our, our cultures, as Mark says, um, there's a, I, I find it helpful, actually, to remember the cultures by thinking through the story of Gideon. Uh, so I'll show you how that works. This is, a, this is Gideon in the whole mighty hero, the Lord is with you. It's dream big. That, that's where we started, dreaming big. Then we had, uh, Ben Gideon builds, builds himself an altar. So he's expecting an encounter because he's built an altar. Okay, then, uh, then with just 300 people, he obeys God and attacks this massive Midianite army. That's because that's stepping out. And, and today we're doing, uh, doing being united, and I'll, I'll explain what the, what the horn is about there in a second. Um, so this is, this is what we're doing, uh, our church cultures. Um, but before we get into that, uh, this is a picture of me and Joshua. Uh, at the end of, this is a few years ago now, just a few, yeah, a few more, a bit grayer than I was. Uh, this is at the end of an inflatable five-kilometer zombie survival run okay so five kilometers okay course lots of inflatable obstacles as you go and also zones zones with some people like makeup and bandages zombies and if the zombies tag you as you run through the zone you lose a life if you lose three lives you turn into a zombie so that was the thing this is like this is my medal i was i was a zombie survivor Got, got a medal at the end. Uh, it's got quite some weight to it. Feel that? It's a, it's a, it's a, I know, right? It's, a, it's like, a, like a proper, it's not like a flimsy thing. It's a proper medal. Um, so it was great fun doing it with Joshua, first of all. If I'd been doing it on my side, it would have been okay. But doing it with somebody was great fun. Uh, but also, as we were doing it, we quickly sussed out that if, if one or two, even just me and Joshua went into a zombie zone by ourselves, it was tricky, like lots of zombies, just two of us. Uh, and so what we realized everybody was doing was bunching together so that they could go through the zombie zones in, in a pack, okay? Then you, then you could avoid, avoid the zombies a bit easier. Uh, we were kind of uniting as we went through. Uh, there's, a, there's a flimsy link there. We were uniting as we went through, and, and it was good fun. Before, before we meeting started today, loads of people helped out to make this work and you know there were things I'd forgotten which we managed to sort out and things like that we, we worked together uh, and we made it work I mean you know yourselves it's better if you're part of a great team if you're doing something okay it's more it's just it's just better in every single way to be part of a great team um, so one of our church cultures is being united um, and that's not just because it makes it easier to get things done. It did make it easier to get things done this morning that we were united, but it's not just because it makes it easier. It's not just because it's more fun. It is more fun when you're part of a good team and everybody's kind of supporting one another and, and in it together, but it's not just that. God is building something in us, okay? God pulls us together and unites us through his Holy Spirit. Uh, what I want to show you today is I, being united, it's an activity of the Holy Spirit in us, and it's a sign, actually, of our transformed lives together. Okay? That's, that's where we're going. Um, so uh, I want to set the scene, okay, for Gideon. I like a good map. It helps me understand what's going on. Okay, uh, I'm going to... You probably can't see much apart from arrows and blobs, okay? Right at the top there, that red circle, that's where Gideon attacks the Midianite army, 300 people on Gideon's side against 135,000 Midianites. Crazy, okay? So they, they break their jaws open, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. God throws the Midianite army into, into confusion and they start attacking each other. And then those who are left escape, right? Now the Midianites are running away from Gideon and they want to get to safety. And the fastest way to do that is to head east. But they've got a problem for on the wrong side of the River Jordan. Okay? We know from the story of Joshua, getting across the River Jordan is not easy. So they're, they're trying to get east. They need to get to a crossing point. That's, that's what the Midianites are up to. Gideon 
is trying to capture especially the Midianite kings. A couple of guys called, I have this written down, Zeba and Zalmina. Because if he, if he doesn't catch them, they'll just come back next year with another army. So he's trying to capture the Midianite kings. Uh, but he's got a problem as well. The Midianites are on camels. Okay, It says earlier in the story, their camels could no more be counted than the sands on the seashore. But, but Gideon and his 300 men, they're on foot. So they're chasing these guys on camels. They're on foot. They can't, they're not going to be carrying a whole bunch of provisions and food and water with them. They're just going to be traveling light, going as fast as they can after the Midianites. So that's, that's the scenario, okay? That's, that's where we're up to in the story. <coughs> so as I say, uh, talking about being united, and this is, my, this is my main point today. We are united around God, by God, and for God, okay? I'm going to unpack that as I go through, but that's, that's the heart of the message today. We are united around God, by God, and for God. I'm going to be using uh, the New Living Translation. You can feel free to uh, follow along in, in any, any translation you like. Okay, I'm going to start off in Judges chapter 7. Uh, I'm just going to show you the map again because there are place names as we read, and I'll point them out. When, Judges chapter 7, verse 22, when the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled to places as far away as Beth Shittar, near Zebara, and to the border of Abel Mahalala, near Tabaf. I've probably not said those right. There's the first place and there's the second place, okay? That's where the Midianites are, are escaping to. Then Gideon sent for the warriors of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, who joined in chasing the army of Midian. So he's called up all of his kind of surrounding tribes up there to, to help him give chase. Gideon also sent messengers throughout the whole country of Ephraim, saying, come down to attack the Midianites. Cut them off at the shallow crossings of the Jordan River at Beth Barah. So basically... He sends messengers to here, to the Ephraimites, to say, they're going to try and cross here, the Jordan, get there and stop them. Okay? It's a, it's a team effort. This isn't actually the first time that Gideon has, has rallied his fellow Israelites. If you head back to Judges 6, in verse 33, you see the first time that Gideon does this. It says, Chapter 6, verse 33. Soon afterward, the armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east formed an alliance against Israel and crossed the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. This is before the first battle. Then the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of the Lord, clothed Gideon with power. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms, and the men of the clan of Abiezer came to him. He also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, summoning their warriors, and all of them responded. See, God called Gideon, but it wasn't just Gideon. When Gideon blew his horn, everybody rallied to him. And it was the first thing that Gideon did when the Holy Spirit came on him. The first thing he did was blow his horn and rallied the troops and everybody responded. When the Holy Spirit is at work, everybody gets, gets called in and joins in. And we find the same. We are united around Jesus and the Holy Spirit unites us together as a family of believers. Uh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, we've all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And, and the, kind of the, the point of that sentence is that part of God's plan for baptizing us is to join us and form us into one body. Um, we often talk about 
the Holy Spirit bringing gifts or bringing power or helping us. But there's another aspect of God sending his Holy Spirit and it's to unite us into one body as his, as his family, as his people. It says in Philippians, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. When we're united around Christ, God sends the Holy Spirit to unite us together as a family. Not just because it's, it's more efficient to get jobs done, not just because it's more enjoyable, um, because he wants to unite us together as a people around himself. It's part of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts and lives. So we're united around God. We're united by God, by the Holy Spirit at work in us, making us one body. But what do I mean by we're united for God? God is glorified by our unity and our love. God is glorified by that. In the old covenant, God's intention wasn't that the people of Israel would be constantly at war with all of their neighbors. It was that Israel would be able to reveal God to the surrounding nations and be a light to them and reveal God to them so that they could worship God as well. It says in Psalm 67, May your ways, God, be known throughout the earth. Your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. It's like they're saying, guys, forget about your idols. The God of the whole world is here and he's good and he's just and he guides and he helps and he wants everybody to know him. That was, that was the mission. Jesus says at the Last Supper, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Our love for one another, points other people to the love of God. Our love for one another does that. God is glorified by our unity and our love. It demonstrates that we are a transformed people. Okay? Loving one another is, is part of our spiritual transformation because it's not a hypothetical love, right? You can hypothetically love people a long way away. <laughs> loving one another means loving each other as we really are with our, with our hang-ups and our flaws and our rough edges, you know, because we're real and we're family and that's, that's who we are. None of us are perfect. And being able to love one another shows that we're transformed because we've been able to set aside <laughs> we've been able to set aside our differences and our own agendas. That passage in Philippians goes on to say, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. You know, don't put a mask on. Let's be real. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. 
He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him a name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are united around God. All of this is as we put him first in our lives. We are united by God. It's the activity of our Holy Spirit baptizing us so that we're baptized into one body. And we're united for God. God is glorified by our love and our unity displays our transformed lives. <clears throat> now, God is fairly central to that. <laughs> so without God, unity falters. And as we keep on reading Gideon's pursuit, uh, we see that. How am I doing? I'm okay. Um, so, I'm just going to carry on down into Judges 8. Uh, so starting off with the guys from Ephraim. Remember the guys from Ephraim? Called to cut the Midianites off at the river. So having been called by Gideon and cut off the Midianite, Midianite army who hadn't crossed, you'd think they'd be celebrating. Okay, we did it. What a team. Hooray. Instead, it says, then the people of Ephraim asked Gideon, why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, this is, this is pride talking, right? You know, we're the Ephraimites. You're just these little tribes. You should have called us first. Okay, they've taken offense because their pride has been dented and it's chipped away at some of the unity. Now, some of the Midianite kings did get across. Some of the Midianites did get across to Jordan, including the kings. So, down to verse four, it says, "Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his three hundred men, and though exhausted, remember chasing these camels on foot, they continued to chase the enemy. When they reached Sukkoth, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, 'Please.'" Give my warriors some food. They are very tired. I am chasing Zeba and Zalmana, the kings of Midian. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you hope that those guys would say, of course, take some food, take some water. In fact, some of us will come with you. Let's do this thing together. But the officials of Sukkoth replied, Catch Zeba and Zamana first, and then we'll feed your army. Okay? This is the next town as well. Peniel says the same thing. This is unbelief, right? They don't think Gideon can do this thing. Sure, when you've done it, then we'll back you. The Spirit of God always generates faith in the God who can. Okay? And when somebody speaks faith... Often it's our Holy Spirit at work in us and it, faith rises up as well in us. Faith begets faith when the Holy Spirit is around. But these guys, they just didn't have any faith, any, any faith and any belief in this. Then Gideon catches the Midianite kings and comes back and sadly he acts in unforgiveness. Gideon took the elders of the town and taught them a lesson, punishing them with thorns and briars from the wilderness. He also tore down the tower of Peniel and killed all the men in the town. Now, this is, this is a fellow Israelite town. This is in the tribe of Dan. These aren't, this isn't like a Midianite place. You know, he's got no mandate from God to do this. He's supposed to be helping the Israelites get rid of the Midianites. Gideon was not perfect. And the more we go into the story and the further through the story we get, the more we see that. 
Uh, but God still used him. And Mark's going to be picking this up next week. Gideon wasn't perfect. God still used him. God loves unity. We know we are not perfect. But Holy Spirit helps us to be united in our imperfections, loving each other the way we are. That love brings God glory because it shows the world that we've got transformed lives. I'm going to break bread in just a second as a sign of our oneness. If I've said anything here which has stirred something up, if I've said anything about pride or unbelief or unforgiveness, and it's just, you just kind of, oof. You need to know that godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. It's fine to be sorry for those things. You've just got to take it to Jesus. Okay? Sorry, thank you, please. I'm sorry, God, but I messed up. Thank you, Jesus, that you died so I can be forgiven. Please give me your Holy Spirit so I can follow you better. That's all we ever need to do. Let's be united. United around God because he's the best He's the source of life. He's the giver of life. We could, he's our basis for our freedom, our forgiveness, and for everything good that happens. Everything good that happens ultimately is because we've got a good God in heaven. And that's actually true of everybody, whether they know God or not. Every good thing is because we've got a good God in heaven. We're united by God because it's his Holy Spirit who draws us together as brothers and sisters. And we're united for God is as we live in love and unity, as Jesus said, by this all people will know that we're his disciples.